Hey, sixth grade, how are you doing? I hope you had a good Easter. I hope you're enjoying the sun and your family and doing fun things outside. I know I'm getting ready to go on a bike ride a little bit later today after I finish our videos. Um, but we got to get that done first. So um, this is what you're going to need for today. You will need a piece of paper, white paper would be great. Um, you'll need a pencil. You can use mechanical or regular. Either one is fine for today. And then you're going to need something to add color. Probably not paints for this one. Let's use crayons, markers, or colored pencils. I'm using colored pencils today. And then you need to be in your backyard to do this. So you're going to have to watch this first and then go out there, or maybe your front yard if you want, go outside somewhere because we're learning about foreground, middle ground, and background today. So if you remember, foreground is all this stuff that's up close to you. In my backyard, it is my patio with potted plants and my dog on it. The middle ground of my backyard would probably be including something like my grass and the fence. Maybe even the bushes that come up over the top of the fence. And the background is everything on the other side of my fence. So far away trees, trees that are in the yard of the neighbors. Maybe if there are clouds and the sky, anything like that, that's background. So that's part of your lesson today. And also you're going to learn about um, texture. So you're going to be coloring this in in a little bit different way than normal using texture instead of just a field or a wash of color. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So let me change up my camera and you can see my desktop here and we'll get started. Okay, go grab your stuff. I'll change up my camera. Okay, here we go. Now normally when we're doing a landscape drawing, I usually have you all put your paper this way, which is called landscape. But for today, I'm going to leave this up to you, but I'm doing mine in portrait mode, meaning tall, because I'm going to have my foreground really close here, my middle ground is going to be here, and then I want to have background. So spend some time out in your backyard. You can make a few sketches before you really get started on this, just to kind of get some ideas going. But I, let me show you how I'm going to handle this. Um, the foreground of your, of your drawing generally is about a third maybe, maybe the first third, definitely not beyond the halfway. You want to think of maybe your paper in thirds, foreground, middle ground, background, or if it was the landscape direction, same thing divided in thirds. So I'm going to kind of do a light line here to indicate where my patio is. And my patio has kind of a, it's almost like a baseball diamond shape to it. So I'm kind of doing the outline and I did do a little skip right here because I'm going to put, we do have a dog house. It doesn't happen to be right here, but when you're drawing a picture, you can change things to be the way you want them to be. So here's our dog house. So this is definitely in my foreground and we built this ourselves. Actually there is a door like this and here's the opening. Okay so there's that. And then we'll put my dog by it. We can be a little silly here. We don't have to be uh, exact about what things look like but I have a skinny dog so I'm going to have him like this. <laughs> he looks kind of like, look at, zoom in. This is weird. It's funny. He looks like a uh, Dracula <laughs> shape because I did his shoulders a little funny. So let me change that up. Let's have him just come more like this. There we go. Okay, so here he is. Here's his legs. Give him some little paws. His back legs. And his tail is like that. Okay, so here's my dog, right? This is not supposed to be the most perfect drawing. This is supposed to get the idea of foreground, middle ground, and background across to you all. So let's not worry too much about that. Okay, now on my patio, I have uh, pavers. So kind of irregular shaped rocks or um, bricks or whatever. Tiles. Tiles, that's what they are. Okay, so I'm going to put those in because I was telling you that part of our lesson today is about texture. So
So I'm going to give you some texture here. I'll do a few around the dog, but I don't want to have the dog get lost in all the texture. So if you notice, I kind of left a little space around him. Let's put some over here this way. Later, when you get to be a famous artist, you'll definitely look back on this and you'll say, oh man, we did not show perspective. We didn't do this properly, but we have to start somewhere. And this is the point of today is to just get a simple drawing. Okay, so here's my foreground. Now we need middle ground. After that, I have grass in this area and then there is a fence at the far side of the yard. So I'm gonna go like a very light line here where the base of my fence is. I'll zoom back out so you can see the whole page. Okay, here's my bottom of my fence. This is the grass area. And the fence is made up of fence posts, um, fence planks, I guess, like this. Okay, but there are also some bushes that hang down over the edge like that come from the neighbor's yard and they hang down over into my yard. Um, and if we want to get technical, I have a little skinny tree right here. So I can add that in. And again, we're not doing super fancy drawing. We're just getting some basic shapes, okay? Basic shapes. Don't worry about filling in all these leaves or anything yet. Okay, so I'm watching. The fence still comes down here. Fence, more fence, and then here it's the top of the fence, and right here there are probably a few more bushes from the neighbor that come over the top of the fence like that. Okay, so we have foreground, we have middle ground, and now we have background. In my yard, there are some far, or in my, when I look out my back to my backyard, there um these guys behind me have a pool, but they have a like an umbrella back here, a sun umbrella, so I can put a big umbrella back here, right? And then there are some faraway trees. Let's just make it like that. We'll fill it in later with some color, and then there's like another tree way over here maybe. And then I'm just going to leave the rest as sky. Okay, so this is what I want from you. Notice how this tree over here is super... Oh, you can't really see that, can you? Let me make it darker. This tree over here is a really big tree compared to this one right here in my yard. It's really tall and the trunk is probably very fat. But because it is off in the distance, it only looks about as skinny as this tree right here. So as you start looking around with your artist's eye, if you look at a tree in your yard and you look at a tree that's farther away, the farther away one is going to be looking skinnier, okay? Just like if you look at a person way far away. They look small, even though you know they're the size of you. Okay, all right, we get all that. Okay, so now we have this basic drawing. Now we're going to have to start coloring it in. This is where the second part of our lesson comes in, which is dealing with texture. You need to think of all the different types of texture that you see in your yard. And you can start with easy or you can start with hard. Let's start with easy. My grass is made up of a million bazillion little blades of grass. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go straight across. Some of them tip, some of them overlap the fence, some of them are shorter, some of them, maybe here's a weed. Look, let's put a couple weeds right there. Okay, I'm going fast. I want you to take your time. Then we have the next layer, right? And on and on. I'm going to just do this one section so you get the point. We're not worrying about coloring and covering up all of the white of the paper. Our job here is to create texture. If you want to get fancy, you can add in a different color of green. Maybe you have a little yellow in there. Maybe there's some dandelion flowers or something in your lawn. Okay, so you get the idea. You're going to do all of this stuff, all the grass with texture like that. All right, let's go for another easy. Fence. Fence is brown, 
at least mine is, yours might be painted or you might have a white fence or no fence at all. The, the wood grain in the fence generally goes up and down, but it isn't necessarily straight up and down. Sometimes it has waviness to it because the wood grain isn't exactly straight. But I will say that in between each board, it's usually a little darker. So I'm gonna darken in between the boards with a few lines of brown placed on top of each other. Okay, here's our next board. If you, again, let me zoom in so you can see this better. If you wanna get fancy, you could do something like you could create a knot hole like that, you know, one of those little places in the fence where the, there was a branch when the tree was growing and then when they cut the tree down and made it into this wood plank, it leaves a little knot hole like that. Okay, and again, in between, we are making darkness. Okay, so you're gonna do the fence all the way across. All right, next, trees. You probably don't need to see me do that. That's pretty easy. You can do, I'll do a little bit of a tree. Let's get another green. How about if we go, you could do something like several little circles all clustered together and overlapping like this could be your tree. You, um, please do not do this because that's just a scribble. Make it intentional. If you're gonna do a scribble, make it on purpose. In advanced art class, we learn about something called, now my mind is blank. Um, so it's an intentional scribble. Controlled scribble is what it's called. Okay, so it looks like this. Let me show it to you over here on this tree. It's almost like writing in cursive writing on top of yourself or writing a bunch of little stars. Okay, so this is called controlled scribble. You're scribbling, but you're doing it with purpose and for a reason. Okay, so that's a texture. All right, I could fill in the rest of that, but we're, in, we're trying to get through this. All right, so now, what else do we have? We have tree trunks. They can be kind of a similar way to how you did the fence, or you could come up with your own idea. Maybe, um, maybe your tree trunk is a little bit, let's use a brown again. Maybe you want to do something this direction. It's kind of like I'm doing little U's, U shapes, or little valleys. It almost gives the trunk a roundness. Okay, you could do that. Um, now, you might ask me, hmm, how am I going to do the sky with texture? All right, well, this is how. Find a section of sky and follow the line that was there made by the other objects. Okay, so this starts where that tree is, it dips down to where all of these, um, the umbrella and the, and the other trees are, the, the leaves on the trees, okay? You need to kind of take your time with this because if you do this fast, it looks sort of sloppy. So take your time filling in the sky. At the end, when you hold your drawing far away from yourself and you look at it, your eye, your brain will trick your eyes or your eye, eyes will trick your brain one way or the other into believing that this whole sky is all colored in completely blue and that these trees are all completely colored in. Okay, so you're gonna do that all the way across with the whole sky. You're gonna take care of your fence, you're gonna take care of your trees. If you have a swimming pool, this is a good technique here for water, but you could even make it more ripply to look like the water has kind of waves or um, I don't know, movement. All right, dog. What are we gonna do about dog? How about if we just did some diagonal lines to fill in my dog? Wanna see that closer? And then if you need to, you can outline your dog so it stands out more. Okay, and on the face, I could do small diagonal lines. On the tail, diagonal lines again, maybe a little outline. Okay, that's dog. Um, bricks, 
Could you do X's? Could you do some more diagonal lines, but then crisscross with other diagonal lines across them? That is called cross hatching. It looks like this. This is cross hatching. So you could do all the bricks in cross hatching. What I don't want to see is any area that's completely colored in and shaded in like you're working in a coloring book and you're coloring everything. And I don't want to see that scribble like we did up here in the tree. I'd like to see a different pattern for each of these things and see how creative you can be. Um, again, this is an outside drawing, so if you are on vacation this week, hopefully not because you're in, supposed to be in school, but if you are, or if you're doing this on the weekend and you're at your Tahoe place or you're at the river or something, you can do an outside drawing there. It does not have to be your own backyard. So there you go. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing your pictures, so don't forget to send me pictures. Thanks, and have a great day.